Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. And this is a new week and I know God has great plans for you. Listen, every plan of God for your life will come to pass this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why you must listen for his voice. Listen to his word. On this platform, we bring you opportunity to hear his voice. And that's my prayer, always my prayer for you. That as I teach you God's word, your ears will be open to hear not just what I say, but what the Lord is saying to you. We create the atmosphere and you hear the voice of God and faith cometh by hearing and hearing the voice of God. Not what I say, but you yourself hearing the voice of God. That's what produces faith in your heart and you respond to it and faith is complete then the miracle happens praise god are you ready for today can we call for that daily bread are you are you ready to receive say with me father i demand right now my daily bread it's coming to me in jesus name amen now we 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 we're in a new month and we're going to be looking as much as God allows us. Uh, you know how we do it. We can start a topic if God sustains it. We continue. And if God says go to something else, we stop. But then as much as I, I, he allows us, we're going to be talking about the knowledge of him. His knowledge. We're going to talk about God. Who is God? <laughs> he is God. What a topic. Who is God? <laughs> you know. Now, we're just going to be sharing, I'm going to be sharing with you the important things you need to know that will help you understand the personality of God. I believe I have enough information based on study and experience, see, to, to talk to you about this. And we are going to start from John chapter 1. John chapter 1. And my desire is to see that the word of God gains full light in your heart. It, it produces the light that you will receive, that you have. And through that light, you begin to relate with him because this is supposed to help you fellowship better with him. It is good. So John chapter 1. Now, you know from verse 1, but there's something I want to point out to us in, in verse 18. Verse 18, John chapter 1. He says, he says, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, whom is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Now, John made this statement. He says, no one has seen God at any time. Incidentally, among all the disciples that wrote that we have, now, I don't believe what we have is the only ones that were, that were written, of course, other disciples may have written stuff about their experience with Jesus, but he just didn't make, uh, make it into the 66 books of the Bible. There's a possibility, you know, because I just feel, I mean, common sense will tell you that not everything can be put in one book. <laughs> you get so, so the people who arrange these, uh, these books, they, they were constrained also by space. They were not right getting compiling a book that will fill the whole world. You know that, right? Like John said, said, these ones are written so that you will believe, and in believing, you will have life. Praise God. So among all the, the, the disciples or apostles of Jesus, apparently only two of them that really worked with Jesus wrote stuff we have here. And that's Matthew and John. See. Luke wasn't a direct disciple of Jesus. Mark, that's John Mark, wasn't a direct disciple of Jesus. 
See, he, the, Luke and Mark, they were, uh, we, we heard of them in the book of Acts, where, um, you know, it was John Mark that separated um, Paul and Barnabas. You remember when they were going on the second missionary? He had left them on the way on the first missionary journey. And now they were on their way for the second missionary journey. And Barnabas wanted John Mark to follow. Paul says, no, remember he left us um, on the way the first time. We cannot trust him. But Barnabas insisted that, no, I can't leave one disciple because of his past mistakes. And Paul insisted, no, he, he's a disappointment. You know, that, that, that does, does mean, I'm not saying exact verbatim what he said, but you know what I'm talking about. And they had that sharp argument and because of each one's insistence, then they came to a conclusion, you know what? Then if that's the case, let's separate because I'll go with him. And Paul went with um, Silas. You remember that whole story. Now that John Mark was the same one who grew up to write the book of Mark. Now, it, you know, I say the Bible is written for our learning. Everything you read in this Bible, you ought to learn something from it. And when he says for our learning, it's not by cramming it. It's not by cramming the story or knowing the story. It's by the wisdom you pull from the story. Okay. For example, I just told you this whole story about John, Mark, and Barnabas, and Paul. And I said, oh, yes, information, Barnabas and John Mark was... Uh, what brought the split between Paul and Barnabas. But then, you now ask yourself the question, could they have handled that matter differently? Now, it's easy to just add, uh, it's easy to just say, that must have been the will of God. But not necessarily. You know, I've heard people, I've, heard, I've actually heard a preacher say this, that Barnabas, after he separated from Paul, no one heard about it. Now, that's, that's not true. That's not true. You see, no one heard about Barnabas in what light? See, no one heard about Barnabas, not because no one heard about him. The reason they said no one heard about Barnabas is because we don't read much about Barnabas again in the book of Acts. But then what you don't realize is the writer of the book of Acts was with Paul. That's Luke. Luke, the person that wrote the book of Luke is the same person that wrote the book of Acts. Now, I'm, I'm going into all this foundation to help you because if you don't understand this foundation, you wouldn't even understand when we begin to ride on the knowledge of God. You won't. So, I'm, I'm, first of all, I have to deal with the writers. Okay? So, um, now, it's, now people just go, Barnabas disappeared. He went out of the scene. Uh, you know, people have even used that to manipulate people say didn't you notice that with us after you know maybe you're working with a pastor and, and you feel the need that look we, we need to separate or something and, you know and they said did you see that after Barnabas left so the the nobody heard about him again no no Barnabas was still doing great works see now maybe Barnabas even did greater things than than Paul <laughs> yeah it's possible but but because Luke, the writer of the book of Acts, was with Paul. And so it was easy to be writing, to tell the story about what happened, what he saw, what, what, what was in that the environment. Now, possibly someone else was writing about Barnabas and all the works, but we don't have that, um, that work in the 66 books of the Bible. And then also, I personally believe that that's my personal belief. See, if there's any other facts that comes out against this and it's really prevailing, I'll accept it. But in my study of all the, the apostles and, and the, the available materials I've found, I strongly believe that Barnabas was a writer of the book of Hebrews. Now, notice I said, that's my personal belief. And, and I won't tell you if it's the Holy Ghost that said it or no, I won't tell you that. But then my own, for now, my own personal belief and convictions points to the fact that Barnabas must have been the writer 
of the book of Hebrews. You know, the details may be another day if the Lord allows me. I'll point out how I came to that conclusion. But that's not the story today. So I'm just saying that to establish that Barnabas was not a, he was not a small disciple of Jesus. Actually, if, if we judge it by today's Pentecostal arrangement, you know how we do things. You will re literally say, Barnabas was a spiritual father of Paul. Even in the book of Acts, you see how we, if it was Barnabas that made Saul to be Paul to be accepted among the, the apostles. See, he pulled him, he took him by the hand and said, come, follow me. Paul went to his village and, and Barnabas went to look for him. I said, no, you don't stay here. Come to the city, come to the city. Come, let me take you to the city. He took him and vouched for him. You remember earlier, they were saying, oh, this guy was killing the Christians. So how do we admit him in? You know, you're looking at him suspiciously. Maybe this is another ploy. Now, these were men filled with the Spirit of God. So he, he just tells you that. Now, that's the early disciples, men who were vibrating with the Spirit of God, disappearing and, and, and doing mighty things. They still had these issues. Now, that's to tell you that what's happening today is not new. Things being done in the flesh is not new. I mean, they could have prayed and said, Lord, now remember there was a man, the man that went to minister to Saul, Ananias. He received a revelation from the Lord concerning Paul. Okay? Yet the disciples were still suspicious of him. They were like, better watch this guy very well. Though. But Barnabas stood his ground and said, no, this one is one of us. Something has happened to him. So Barnabas believed his story. And not just believed his story, took him up. Barnabas gave him platforms. Yes, he did. <laughs> and that's Barnabas' personality, even before he met Paul. He was the one actor. And that's how he found Paul, because the disciples sent him to go and, uh, what's the word now we use today? Visit the brethren, or that's what we used to do. Follow up, yes. <laughs> God. He was he was sent to follow up the brethren. So it was in the, uh, in doing that job, and, and the Bible listed the qualities about Barnabas that made them choose him for that. So in doing that, he he found Paul, and then said, "No, you come with me." See, so his his story didn't end because he separated from Paul. But then another thing I want to point out is. Even their separation, have you asked yourself this question? Was it of God or was it, uh, was it um, of the flesh? They separated because of strife. See, John Mark brought that strife and, and they didn't handle, I believe they didn't handle that strife very well. There was no time written that they said, okay, you know what, um, let's pray about it. There was no time. There was an argument. And, and from the place of argument, they took a decision. Now, that's another thing to avoid as believers. Despite how sharp arguments are. Now, as a believer, you you know, once two people are doing something together, there definitely is going to be that issue of um, how do we handle this matter? Okay, this is my view. This is my view. It happens even till this day. It happens. Now, how do you come to a conclusion on that? Do you look at the sharp arguments? I mean, people are doing ministry together. They get to a point where they say, you know what? Um, this is my view concerning this. Oh, no, this is my view. Or someone say, oh, you have changed. You have changed. You have changed. Now, these are people who started well together. But then when maybe prosperity comes, fame comes, and then they, go, they start doing this, I'm more popular than you kind of thing. So I need to take charge. You know, sometimes it, these things happen. And do you break up from the place of strife? It's like, say, I don't want to offend you, so it's better I go my way. And then so I say, well, if that's what you want to do, it's fine. Or do you both look at yourselves and sit down and remember how you started? And then you ask yourselves this question. Now we are here. Is this what God wants us to do? Or is this what fame and money wants us to do? Would you find the discipline to go back in and pray and say, you know what? A lot of things have happened. But see, 
concerning this uh, agreement, concerning this uh, partnership, can we just pray? Can we take out some time to fast and pray? Whatever the Lord clarifies in our hearts. Let's just pray. And then you agree, take out time. Can we spend three days to fast and pray? Because why three days? Because number one, before you get to that point, either both of you, or at least one of you, must have risen in a place of bitterness or disdain or a lot of things must have happened to at least one person's heart. You see? So it's not just something to say, let's pray. And, and, and sometimes someone say, maybe there's a third party who will thus say, yes, the Holy Ghost, you're not supposed to separate. It doesn't solve the problem. You're not supposed to celebrate, so you patch up for a while, patch up for a while, then some things happen again and then. So why do I say, I recommend spend at least three days focusing. If both of you can go to the same environment, not separate environment, both of you can go to the same environment, say, look, let's lock up ourselves and fast and pray for three days. Why three days? I, the first day will be dealing with your own personal hearts. You need a full day or even more, but at least a full day to deal with yourself. And, and, and you present yourself before, Lord, don't go present yourself and say, Father, you know, this guy has done me so much wrong. Uh -uh. You present yourself and say, Father, this is me. Please deal with me. Deal with me for who I am. And then the Lord will begin to show you how bitter you have become. He will begin to show you how anger has entered you. He'll be, and he's not going to point out who caused it. I'm telling you the truth. He's just going to deal with you. And while he's dealing with you, he's dealing with the other person. Now both of you are realizing that, man, what has happened to me? I used to love God. I used to love... There are preachers who don't love God anymore. They don't realize it. True. They don't realize it. They are still in the work of God. See, they are still preaching God. But truly speaking, they have no iota of love for God again. They now preach because they have the Sunday meeting or midweek meeting to preach at. They now preach because they need to continue um, increasing the budget or raising the budget, um, raising money to meet the budget. Meaning, we have to keep doing what I'm doing so that the money will be coming. They, they do all that. I'm telling you, but, but they don't realize that it's their sincere work with God have ceased long ago. But you see now, when they come to that place of fasting for this purpose, I've learned in life that everything that happens in life doesn't just happen for a reason. And the reason is for you. So your response to those issues will determine what will become of you afterwards. Now, you see this thing, and, and for example, like I suggest to you, now I don't know, I may be just talking to someone listening to me. Same thing with marriage. Oh, I'm tired of my husband. I, I, I don't want to stay here anymore. I, I want us to separate. I want us to divorce. Yes, you've come to that place where you feel, this is, this is my final answer, okay? Okay, now before you voice it out to say, let's do this, before you agree, maybe you've even said it to the other person. Like, I, I'm thinking, let's, let's separate. Maybe you've even said from next month, go your way, I go my way. Now, whatever it is, can you just do this? Both of you just agree that, yeah, we've come to this place, but before we take this final decision, can we go before the Lord in fasting? and pray and both of you agree i'm talking to both of you assuming both of you are christians both of you are children of god we came into this union we came into this business same to business partners we came into this business by the word of the lord we came into this business believing that it was the will of god now we are here we want to separate let's let's find out if that's the will of god for us. That's why what has happened between us. Can we just take this final? You know what the Bible says? In all your ways, acknowledge Him. So now it's time for breakup. Can you acknowledge Him? And then you go before Him and say, Lord, this is where we are. This is where I am. And don't start reporting the other person to God. Report yourself before the Lord. And say, Lord, please, 
these things I don't know. Teach me. You will be amazed at the kind of things the Holy Spirit, because you guys have gotten to that point, doesn't mean truly it's time to break up. And sincerely also, it's possible it will be time to break up. But you don't want to do it out of offense. You want to do it because you are convinced that that is the will of God. And that's how God is going to prosper both of you. You see? So please take note of this and, and, and it's important. Now, I, I we, we have a topic that we're talking about. Like I told you on this broadcast, we start off and the Holy Spirit begins to pull in a certain direction. And I don't hesitate. I like, follow. Because we're here to minister. And that's it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray for you right now. That the Spirit of God will use all these to bring forth knowledge. The knowledge of Him to you. I pray. That Lord will confirm his will and purpose in your heart. And you will not be involved or you will not take any wrong decision that will affect your destiny. I pray that the Spirit of God will give you calmness of mind to see, to hear, and to understand. And take the best decisions. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a fruitful day. I'll see you tomorrow.